welcome back to the pig room you guys or welcome to the pig room if you are new here today's video is going to be a hard one i have never came across a more jaw-dropping listing for guinea pigs in need in my entire life. This definitely takes the cake as the worst situation I have ever seen with guinea pigs and their care. I just want to jump right into this video and just get it going because this is going to be a roller coaster. There's going to be a lot involved and so much to do. I am literally rescuing these guinea pigs tomorrow. It is currently Sunday the 31st and I'm rescuing them tomorrow at 12 on the 1st of August. So this is happening very, very soon. Well, let's just jump into this. I'll give you guys the rundown of this entire situation, how it came about, how I found out about them, and let's just get this video started. Alrighty, so my friend had actually sent me this listing of these guinea pigs on Craigslist. Usually um, every single month or even sometimes even more than that, every two weeks, three weeks, whatever the case may be, you usually will find me perusing on these websites and seeing, you know, where, what kind of situations are guinea pigs in. I'm just very curious about certain rehoming situations and just seeing the kind of care that they're coming from. So I will be browsing on platforms like Guinea Pig Finder, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. Those seem to be the more popular ones. So this listing was actually not one that I had found myself. It was sent by my friend. Thank you and shout out to Jennifer. You are seriously amazing. Thank you so much for sending this to me. I actually really appreciate when you guys send me these kinds of situations, especially if they're close by me. I live in Jersey and this one's actually located in Staten Island, so it's about a 50 minute drive from me. Not super far, um, but then again, like driving to New York is not the best, but regardless, we're still doing it. So yeah, she had actually sent this to me and immediately upon opening this listing, my jaw had hit the floor. So I'm actually going to scooch over and just pop up the images so you guys can see. But as you guys can see from these images, we have a total of five guinea pigs living in fish tanks. So the listing actually mentions that there is a wife who's actually giving these guinea pigs up because her husband has unfortunately became ill. So I completely feel for her in this situation and not being able to provide and take care of these animals when her husband is ill. So I express my love 110% in that type of situation. But the only thing I will say is that I find it very hard to believe that anyone looking at this kind of care that these pigs are in can look at that and, and feel like that's okay. As you guys can obviously see from the photos, we have four guinea pigs, four females, hopefully, living in a very small aquarium. I wanna say it's probably like a 10 gallon, 15 gallon, maybe a little bit bigger, um, but regardless of the fact, whatever size it may be, aquariums are not suitable enclosures for guinea pigs. And the main reasoning for this is because with guinea pigs peeing in these tanks that are fully enclosed with very poor air circulation, the pee and the smell of it can build up really, really quickly. It creates a kind of toxicity level in the air. Guinea pigs have a very sensitive system, so putting them in a tank, even if it's just one, is very dangerous. The fact that there's four living in one tank is mind-bottling, and also the fact that they have a hidey house in there, taking up even more room, literally half the tank. It's just so incredibly tiny, and at first glance, I don't see any water, I don't see any hay, I see no enrichment, no toys, no treats, I don't even see pellets, I just see the bowl. So, this is really, really bad, but it doesn't stop there. We have a, another guinea pig who is a single male living in the same exact situation, another tank with completely nothing, just a pellet dish, a mineral chew, and then a water bottle. So these pigs are really, really going through it. I can only imagine how scared and lonely and neglected they must feel. Looking at the images, I feel so incredibly claustrophobic, and I just, I can't imagine how it feels to be living in that. Um, I don't know how old they are. I don't know how long they've been in there for. I don't know if they were living in something different and they're just living in this now. I don't know anything. When it comes to talking to owners about, you know, wanting to rehome their animals and being interested in taking them in, I don't ever like to ask too many questions because I feel like it's prying into, you know, their care. And I would hate to scare them away and just kind of lose this whole rescue situation. So I'm approaching this the easiest way possible and being obviously as nice as I possibly can. Um, which is the most important thing when it comes to doing rescues, you know, it just in general. So I'm obviously going to be, you know, going there, approaching her, you know, as if like I, I don't know anything, as if I'm not like a guinea pig expert and that this isn't my job. I'm just a normal everyday person picking these animals up. But, you know, little does the owner know that I'm actually 
rescuing them and going to be bringing them into a lot better care, like totally uncomparable to what they're currently in. So yeah, that is the situation. Um, I hope you guys are excited for this video. I am too. Um, I actually had created a GoFundMe and we've already reached our goal in probably less than like two and a half hours, which is insane. But thank you guys so much. Obviously, if this was a case where I was like rescuing about two guinea pigs, I would probably not even create the GoFundMe. But the fact that there's five, it's a lot to take on. I'm actually having to rearrange my entire room so I can actually fit them in my home. Plans, future plans for them. Um, I don't really know as far as yet what I want to do with them. I will be considering obviously rehoming them to a really good home, bringing them to a rescue. I do have some connections to one rescue, so that may work out to be something that we do. But let's just focus on getting them into my care, better care for that matter, and just seeing how they are. We're going to be taking them to the vet to get a full health check and seeing if there's anything going on. I would not be surprised if they have upper respiratory infections, especially with the four living in that one tiny tank and spreading all their germs with each other. So this may be um, a lot more than we think it is. Hopefully it's not a, you know, a huge case where we have to deal with a lot of issues. But then again, it comes with the territory. So we will do what we can to save these little babies. So I'm actually going to go ahead and head to PetSmart to go ahead and pick up these pigs some goodies. Again, I don't think they've ever had any toys, any treats, any hay, any really good pelleted food. So we're going to go ahead and head there and hook them up. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will talk to you guys after. Alrighty guys. So we just pulled up to Petco. I just want to make a little announcement. I don't typically like to come to big chain pet stores when it comes to buying things for my pigs, but in cases like this where I'm on a time crunch, I'm literally picking up the pigs tomorrow, I I guess I have to in this case because there's no other pet stores that are like mom and pop ones. So I do have to come here, unfortunately, and give them some money. But I think for this case, it is okay. We are here to go ahead and pick up some things for the pigs, toys, treats, water bottles, food dishes, all kinds of things that they're going to need. There's also a thrift store right next door. So I may go there to get some like pellet dishes because it probably doesn't make sense to get like really expensive ones at Petco. And then if we can't find everything here, because sometimes this Petco that's by me, like their shelves are completely empty. It feels like they never restock things. We're gonna go to PetSmart afterwards um, and they usually have everything that I do need. For the most part, you know, I've got like pellets and stuff like that for my own pigs, but I think just for this case, it would just be better just to get them their own stuff. So we'll get their own hay, we'll get their own pellets. And I feel like in that case, keeping things separated will work a lot better. So let's go ahead and head into Petco and see what we can find them.
Alrighty guys, so I just got done constructing the first cage. This is going to be for the four girls. Now I must say, to get this out of the way, this is not the size I would ever go for for four guinea pigs. This is way too small in my opinion, but compared to where they are coming from, this is going to be massive to them. And also as just a temporary last minute solution, this works. It's definitely a great size cage for them to live comfortably in and peacefully. And again, where they're coming from, this is definitely an upgrade. So thankfully I had a lot of grids on hand from the bonding session between Vision and the girls because I ordered an extra box. So I was able to construct this two by six with obviously it off the ground. And then I also had some leftover chloroplast, which I just cut up into big strips, two big strips. And then I filled in the missing pieces over there with some smaller bits. So that way I can protect my floors from getting soaked with pee or poop. Obviously they're going going to fall behind there and also in front. So I may have to be doing some vacuuming here and there, but I don't really mind for the sake of having the pigs be in a much better situation. Now, all that's actually left to do is to go ahead and decorate this cage. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably do that. I did actually make a liner right here, but this is for three grid wide cages. I could technically fold it, but it might be too bulky. So I don't think that's gonna work. So I think we're gonna have to just do some towels with some fleece on top. But let me go ahead and show you guys what I got from Peko and PetSmart. So starting off with Peko, here is everything I got. News about this, I will tell you guys in a second. Mikey has high interest in it. But I got the Oxbow Garden Select Adult Guinea Pig Food. So I actually had 20, no 50, two 25 pound bags of the Oxbow Essentials guinea pig pellets delivered today. But I decided to pick up this small four pound bag because I really like to mix my pellets. I'm not sure what kind of pellets that these pigs are on. She will be giving me everything that they come with. So we will find out exactly what kind of food they're on and then I'll go ahead and wean them. But I do like having my pigs on more healthier food. So this is what I'd like to switch the pigs to. And then I also got the KT glass 12 ounce water bottles. I don't know why I said ounce like that. <laughs> But these are my favorite. I really, really like these. I've never had issues with them leaking. They hold up really, really well. So I just have three of these. This is all that Peko had. I would have gotten an additional one um, just because I think that, you know, with the three water bottles for four girls, that works out and then one for a single boy. But I do have, excuse me, Mikey, I do have an extra full cheeks one in the pig room. So I'll probably end up giving that to the boy. And then the four girls will have their three water bottles. Mikey wants to play right now. I'm sorry, buddy, not right now. And then I picked up these field and Forest by KT. These are mini hay bales. So it's just Timothy hay with some apple bits on top. But I remember seeing a story on these from someone that I follow on Instagram and how she was calling them out for one specific reason. And that's the fact that they have potato starch. So I'm not sure if you guys can make that out right there, but under ingredients, the last one, it says potato starch. This is such an unnecessary ingredient to have in a guinea pig treat or even food for that matter, mainly because guinea pigs can't eat potatoes. It's actually quite dangerous for them. So the fact that this brand put potato starch inside of these hay bales for some unnecessary reason, sometimes it's used as a binding ingredient, but I don't know how that could be used in this purpose as a binding ingredient because it's just Timothy hay tied together. It makes no sense. But after I got home and looked at these, I was like, oh my God, I was just reminded of that story and I bought them. So these are going to be returned and not used. So definitely not giving them to the pigs. These pigs are getting spoiled with the right kind of treats and ingredients and foods. So these are, for lack of a better word, trash. And then moving on to what I got from PetSmart, starting with this over here, it is this twig tunnel made of willow by Full Cheeks. My pigs really, really like these and I figured why not, you know, spoil them as equally. So I decided to get one of these. This was actually in a random aisle, not thrown with any of the guinea pig items. So I actually randomly found this. So I decided to go ahead and pick this up. And then I got the Natural Science Oxbow Treats. This is the vitamin C version. I'm not sure if these pigs have ever received any veggies or sources of vitamin C. So I just think in this case, the more the better. So I'm going to be actually using this in combination with their everyday veggies. So this is just a nice little boost to vitamin C and then same material as the tunnel but I just got it in ball versions I'm probably gonna remove the hooks I'm not sure why they have the hooks on them um, mainly because it's a ball it's supposed to be like rolled around and play with so I'll probably take those off but I just got two of these one for the girls and one for the boys I think they're really going to have fun with toys just because they've never experienced them from my understanding from the looks of the photos and then we have the Oxbow celebration cupcakes these are very hit or miss amongst pigs my pigs absolutely love them especially especially my herd, my girls, but maybe they'll like them, maybe they won't, but regardless of the fact, it's there for their enjoyment to play with if they choose to. And then I also picked up this, what's it called? Crazy Hay Ball. 
Um, so it's just normal Timothy Hay in a ball form. So just another fun toy for them to play with and eat. And then also a nice little enrichment toy because it's food and also a toy. It's just these Timothy twists and these little kind of braided little strips. So this comes with one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So I'll throw, you know, four or five of these inside of the girl's cage and then one of them in the boy's cage. So I got plenty of toys for them to play with. It's going to be so nice to see them play with all these types of toys and just finally live a normal pig life how they should. One that's full of enrichment. So I'm really excited for the first initial couple minutes when I put them in the cage and them actually exploring and just experiencing life as a pig for the first time because they truly are in this case. But yes, that's what I got from Peko and PetSmart. So what's next for me is to go ahead and decorate the cage. So that's what I'm going to go do. If I don't show you guys the finished cage by tonight, I will show you in the morning. And then I'll also update you with where the boy is going. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. So I just got done decorating the girl's cage. It looks so incredibly nice. I love the color scheme that we have going on. I wanted to keep it as open as possible when it came to actually putting things in the cage. So I think adding Heidi houses is something that I don't wanna do because it would take up so much room. So I actually had decided to make a kind of a makeshift fleece forest. It's just a single piece of fleece. And then I just cut these little strips and then attached it with my grommet and some spare pieces of fleece. So they can just hang under there. I'm not sure how close they are with one another. I would imagine that they probably would be pretty close. So all four of them may just cuddle up with each other under here. Very, very cozy. And then we've got our three water bottles. We've got one right here, one here, and then one here. Um, it's pretty tight. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to add another pellet dish. I may add like one more in the corner over here with these dishes that I got from Goodwill. But I think just, you know, for the time being and scoping out to seeing how the relationships work, I think one will be fine and one will be plenty. We've got our willow ball, our hay ball, our hay sticks, the celebration cupcake, and then also our twig tunnel with a pee pad. We've got our target bath mat. And then I also decided to make a litter box just because I felt like it would have made a mess if I didn't do this with the hay kind of coming out to the sides of the cages just because I don't have a chloroplast base for this. And then I also decided to add a spare piece of fleece on top just so that they feel a little bit more safe. This is pretty open and with their situation, I'm sure they're not very very socialized. So they're going to be pretty scared. So I feel like I can't go wrong with adding more levels of protection. So we're actually texting right now. And she had let me know that the pig's names are Sushi, Dim Sum, Twilight, Wonton, and Chopstick. I'm not sure which name goes to which pig. I'm sure I'll find out the day that I pick them up tomorrow. And she also had mentioned that Sushi, Dim Sum, and Twilight are about a year and a half. And then Wonton and Chopstick were born last February. So they're relatively pretty young, which is surprising. I would have expected them to be a little bit older. But I can say that I'm actually glad they're younger just because being in that situation, I would have hoped that they did not spend a majority of their life inside of there. So they are young, relatively, and they're going to now be living their life in complete harmony, complete peace, and being taken care of the pig room. So I'm super excited for them. They have no idea what's coming for them, which is like what's getting me most excited. Like they're probably thinking they're just gonna live in that fish tank for the rest of their life, but they got they got luxury coming their way. I'm really impressed I was able to pull this off this quickly on such a last minute time crunch. I will say, I still have no idea where my uh, my single male's gonna go. I feel like his name is Chopstick. He looks like a chopstick. I'm gonna obviously change their names, but just for the time being, I'm, I'm calling him Chopstick. I'm not sure where he's going to go. I mean, I, again, I do have my pop-up play pens. I don't want Mikey in here with them because, you know, that thing can't be raised unless I had like a table or something. Was possibly thinking of actually putting him underneath here and, you know, putting some lights and everything. That could potentially work. I'm not sure. <laughs> I really don't know. I'm still giving it thought. I definitely will have a more definitive answer in the morning right before I go get them. I'm just going to spend some time thinking about what it is that I can do just because I don't have any more grids. So I'm kind of at a loss. I would have liked to do like a second level up here. So it would do like a two by two or something for him, but I don't have any more grids. So I can't do that. But nonetheless, I will figure it out and I will update you guys with what happens. But yes, here is the cage all nice and set up. I hope you guys are just as excited to go ahead and get these piggies with me. So the next time that I talk to you will be tomorrow morning. Hopefully I'll have a setup for the boy and I'll show you guys that and then we'll be off tomorrow to go get the pigs. Okay, I'm literally running. <laughs> 
or driving for that matter to Bed Bath & Beyond. I was just looking online um, for grids. Obviously I can't get them like tonight or tomorrow morning. So I checked online and it says that Bed Bath & Beyond has 12 inch grids, but in silver. They're not the same brand, but they're 12 inch. So I feel like they'll work. And if I do a two by two, on top of the girl's cage, I feel like that could be much better because I was thinking of actually putting him underneath the cage, but that would just get complicated and like hard to reach him and Mikey would be next to him. So let's not do that. Let's actually put him above the cage. I think a two by two will work. I definitely think it's obviously small, but given where he's coming from and how much better of air circulation there will be, it'll work out better. So I'm on my way there now, now, now. Hopefully they have them. I did put as the option um, like our pickup and it said that they had them in stock and I could pick them up in an hour, but that was cutting it way too close to them closing at seven. It's like 5.45 now. So I wanna make sure I'm able to get them tonight. So hopefully when I get there, I can just see them and take them and check out with them. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed are there. I think we have found the solution for our single boy Chopstick, I think that's what his name is. Um, subject to change, obviously. But yeah, let me go ahead and head there and I will talk to you guys, hopefully, when I get them. Oh my goodness, you guys, they had them. I'm so freaking excited. They were almost $40 for like four grids or four cubes, which is like a total ripoff because it's like a quarter of the price of what I could get, like amount of grids off the Amazon ones. The Amazon ones, you get so much more, but we are on a time crunch, so I gotta use these, but Hopefully they work. Um, I think the spacing of the actual cube is a lot bigger than the traditional ones for the ones that I have, but this will work. Um, I'm really happy they had them and it's like an hour till close, so perfect. Gonna go head home, set up the cage, and then I will talk to you guys later. Good morning, you guys. Today is the day we are going to rescue the pigs. I actually constructed the boy's cage last night, so I wanna go ahead and actually show you it before we leave. Right now it is 10.32, so we are leaving here in about 13 minutes to go ahead and head there. We have about a 50 minute to an hour drive, so it's not too bad, um, and then I also have to drop off Andy, who's right over there, to a train station nearby, and then we're gonna be heading back home alone with the piggies. So yeah, let me go ahead and show you guys a boy's cage. Alrighty, so here is the boy's cage. As I mentioned to you guys, obviously this is all the room that I can provide. So if I could, I would make it bigger, but I was able to make him a two by two. But what I have for his liners are some pig mats. So we just have two of them in the baby blue and also the gray. We've got a little makeshift fleece forest that I made that's just up here, just to give him some protection. I didn't want to put any hidey houses in because I felt like it was going to take up way too much space. So I feel like this is a lot better because it's way more open. We've got his toys. So we've got his willow ball back there, this Timothy twist, and then also the celebration cupcake. We've got his water bottle, his pellet dish, and then also his hay. I don't think these pigs have ever gotten hay, so they're literally going to experience it for the first time. So it's going to be really interesting to see it on camera. Yeah, this is the setup. So they got their little kitchen area over there, bath mats, toys, twig tunnel, and then this nice little cozy area in the back. But yeah, let's go ahead and get the pigs. So we are loaded up in the car with everything we need to go ahead and rescue the piggies. So the two groups of females are going to go in these bins with pig mats on the bottom. So two girls, two girls, and then the single boy is going to go into this cardboard box right here. And then inside this coach box, we just have a bunch of hay for them to snack on. And then also in my insulated bag, we have some peppers. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get them. All right, everyone. So the pigs are in our possession. We just got them. As you can see behind us, we have the single male right here and then the four girls in this black tub. She gave us a bunch of stuff. It was a very not good situation um, where they were coming from. Obviously going into this, I knew it was going to be pretty bad, but going into her apartment and seeing the state of these animals, her house condition, and also her having tons of dogs in small crates, it was really hard to see. It was almost similar to a hoarding situation and I don't want to pass judgment you know I don't know exactly what everyone is going through and you know why the state of their house looks that way but there comes a time when I feel like it's important to ask for help and to acknowledge that this is not good for these animals to be living in so I was happy that I was able to obviously rescue these pigs and get them off of her her chest and stuff like that because she's already going through a lot with her sick husband she was a really nice lady like super super sweet and just a great person and I don't think she knew she was doing any wrong 
wrong, definitely not. So that made it a little bit easier. Just, you know, she was a good person trying her best with everything that she knew, but obviously there was a lack of research being done. So nonetheless, we are focusing on the, the future for these pigs and just bringing them into better care with me. So let's go ahead and head home because we have a 50 minute drive and let's go ahead and move these piggies into their new enclosures. And also I wanna show them off to you guys. So let's go. All right, we're currently at the train station right now but I decided to go ahead and give them a pig mat on top of this pellets, pellet bedding. Um, it's just, they're like running around and it's just doesn't seem comfortable. So this is just a lot more plush and comfortable for them. As you can see, they're very timid and they're like crawling on top of each other. So these, I, I actually got the rundown from the owner. That's the mom. Um, they were bought together from Petco along with the male over there. And this is the mom, that's the dad, and then these are the two babies who were born in February. So, yeah, we've got a mom and a dad and some babies on our hand. And like this, I guess you would call her like the aunt or something. Um, so, but I also just gave them some hay for them to munch on. Doesn't seem like they've ever had hay in their life, but it seems like they're enjoying it from the looks of it. And then also some pepper for them to munch on until we get home. And then here's the boy. He is munching down on his hay. I also decided to put a pig mat on the bottom because it is just filthy underneath here. And then Andy's giving them some more hay, but yeah, he is absolutely loving <laughs> all this hay right now. I'm not sure how their teeth condition are. They might be long, given that they haven't had hay in probably the entirety of their life, but we will see once I give them obviously their full health checks. And these mineral chews, oh my God, not good at all. He is very friendly as well. He's like such a sweet boy, hi. But guys, this is so good to see. We finally have them in our possession. I am so incredibly happy but we're just gonna start heading home now and I'll update you guys later. Alrighty everyone, so I just got home with all of the piggies. As you can see, here they are right here, the girls, and then here we have our boy. So what's left to do is just to go ahead and move them into our cage right here. Obviously he's going to be living on this two by two on the upper level. And then the four girls are going to be living in here, a two by six. I'm actually really glad that they're relatively small, especially these three, because that way they're not taking up like mass amounts of space with their bodies being super large. So thankfully we lucked out with getting some small piggies. Obviously mine is this one, the mom. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just set up my camera, give them a quick look, see if there's anything like right off the bat that I can tell that's wrong with them. And then we'll just go from there. So I think let's start off with doing him first and then we'll move on to the ladies. So sad, it smells so bad too. It's not like a farm. Yeah, like a farm <laughs> mixed with just like urine. Yeah. Come here. All right. Oh my God, and they're so frail too. Guys, I'm on FaceTime with Alyssa, so if you hear me talking to someone else and not you, that's why. So here's our boy right here. Very light, so he definitely needs to be beefed up, but his fur is literally so stunning, and he's also very sweet as well. Obviously very skittish. Um, the nails actually don't look that bad. Oh, his penis doesn't look that bad. I think she actually was cutting their nails, which is good. Oh my goodness, look at that with your face. Look at that with your face. Oh my god, he's so cute. Look at that with your face. Look at him. He gives me like Kevin vibes. Uh, he does. Right? Kind of looks like him. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move our boy into his little two by two. <laughs> it's so small, but better than what he was in before. I'm giving Alyssa a front row seat to this. Hold on, let me just sit down real quick. All right. So not much to explore, but it's better than what you had before, buddy. Look, bud, you got everything you need now. He's probably like, what is this? He's so He's confused. so confused. I know. Well, because his feet have only ever touched those, like, wood pellets. This is what heaven feels like. I know, one of the girls has really dry feet, so I definitely have to, like, put ointment on them. Hi, bud. gonna do the girls now in no specific order let's just get my favorite one first <laughs> the one I connect to most she seems like she's the most friendly and the least timid very small and tiny um, but this one is black with like little brown spots on her her nails are a little bit long but not too bad 
She's so little. I know, she feels like so frail. But this is her right here. Very, very stunning. Um, but I'm just gonna put them in the cage because I don't want to handle them for too long. And I want to show you guys their reactions going into the cage. Then we'll get the mom. This is the mom right here, who's the bigger one, a lot heavier. All right, we'll put her in. They're so squirmy. That looks like Ricky. It does, right? And here's our other baby right here. Last but not least, our most squirmy one of all, who is very tiny and malnourished. This one right here. I love their little ears, they're so cute. so I can go ahead and get the appointment scheduled right now. Yeah, she definitely needs to be seen. But like, it's almost like her spine feels, or like looks off. That's how Jojo was, but that's his breed. And then it kind of like, once he like chunked out, he stopped doing it so much, but she may just be like very malnourished that like, I mean, they had- I, Yeah, I, I've never seen it that much. They had nowhere to walk. Yeah, exactly. She's probably just, she, she might have grew that way. That is true. Just cause it was such a tight space. Yep. Well, they can also, I was worried about the bumblefoot with not having any room to walk. So the two are inside of the hay, and then this one over here is drinking some water. And then we have another one in the tunnel who's already made herself at home and laying down. Um, this one right here, her back is looking a little bit archy. Like it's just, look, she looks like a camel, which is very concerning. So she's definitely gonna have to get that checked out. I'm not sure what it could be. My mind goes to scurvy with the lack of vitamin C. I know that can be a side effect of not getting enough vitamin C. Yeah, I'm gonna monitor her with a close eye, obviously for the next couple hours and just see if it kind of goes down. And if not, we'll get her checked out by a vet, but I'm actually gonna call them within the hour and get an appointment scheduled like as soon as possible. But yeah, the pigs are just gonna hang out in here. As soon as the other two come out, I'll show you guys, but they're just very timid and scared right now, which is to be expected. And then our boy up here is just <laughs> contemplating his life right now as well. Yeah, I'll update you guys very soon. Alrighty, everyone. So let's go ahead and get into the knit and grit of how this rescue all went down. What I experienced um, was definitely the one that takes the cake for worst care and environment I have ever seen pigs in. Mikey, of course, wants to be a part of the video. Wouldn't be a pig room video without you, buddy. Luckily, the owner was really, really, really nice. She was very sweet. Immediately upon arrival, uh, once I texted her that we were here, she was smoking in her hallway. Um, no judgment towards that, but I found that to be a little bit <laughs> strange. The building was actually only one apartment, that being hers. So it was just one staircase up and then to the right was her apartment. Um, it was, I wanna say maybe about 700, 800 square feet. So it wasn't super big. I, even before opening the door, she was greeted with a bunch of dogs barking. So immediately I knew that this woman had other animals than just guinea pigs. And she actually had about eight, eight dogs <laughs> living in this small apartment. Eight pugs to be exact. She was clearly obsessed with pug breeded dogs, um, given all of the trinkets and posters and clocks, pictures, figurines of pugs, every square inch of this apartment. I just want to quickly say it was a very bad situation with how these other dogs were taken care of. Crates stacked on top of each other, dogs barking nonstop. This was definitely a person who was incapable of caring for animals properly, given her circumstance with her husband being ill and just not being able to maintain a cleanly environment. And I, again, just don't want to have that come across as me judging. Can you stop it, mister? I don't want to have that come across as me judging because I definitely am not. You know, I know that there's things that happen in life 
um, that can, you know, cause those types of things with not being able to clean your apartment. But I definitely can tell from just looking at it, it's been months and months and months and months and to the point where it was pretty detrimental to the health of not only the guinea pigs but also the dogs. I also just want to say that I think it was really great that she took it upon herself to go ahead and list these guinea pigs on Craigslist and just understand that, you know what, I can't really manage these animals anymore. I would love for them to find a new home and thankfully she found or I found her for that matter because she actually had listed them as free and five free guinea pigs on Craigslist is like music and the best possible thing to <laughs> a snake owner's ears. Um, because that is used as live feed and I just I'm really glad that they did not get a hold of the wrong person taking them in because she actually did not ask me any questions about where the animals were going what kind of experience they have what kind of care that they're going into she just assumed that I would just take care of them and keep them in the fish tanks and just let it be that but uh, obviously that is further from the case with talking about those fish tanks Let's go ahead and show you uh, what they were living in. Alrighty, so typically when it comes to my rescues, I like to actually take everything that the owner gives me for the purpose of you guys really understanding visually where the pigs are coming from and also to talk about why certain things aren't great for guinea pigs and not in this case, suitable enclosures for guinea pigs. So this is the enclosure that the male guinea pig was living in for the last couple months. I believe this could potentially be a 10 gallon tank. It is very, very small as you can tell by the size of it. I just have my pig mat inside of here and some hay, um, but regardless of the fact that those are in there, all that was in here was these pine pellets right here, which are obviously very dirty and urine filled and also feces filled. And then in here, we have this wonderful toy for him to stay occupied and have a very fun time. And that is this Himalayan salt lick right here. He's definitely had a blast with that, as you can tell. Um, and then a water bottle. So great enclosure, plenty of room to run around. I am just kidding. This is the worst enclosure I've ever seen. So bad. This is... This takes the cake for the worst enclosure, definitely. And I actually have the fish tank that the girls were living in, um, in my car, but I'm kind of too lazy to get it. But just know that they were living in something similar to this, but just about six or eight inches longer. So I think they were living in a 15 to 20 gallon tank. So no different, four guinea pigs in a small tank. I don't know how anyone can possibly look at that care and think, that's good. Like they are definitely going to love that. I don't understand. It baffles me. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, but that is unfortunately the world that we live in with some people and people really just, I can't, I don't even know if I can call it not doing proper research. I just think that they purely do not <laughs> give a damn about these guinea pigs lives. And it's very unfortunate, but thankfully in this matter, we save them. The one thing I will say that's really, really great about adopting and not shopping or rescuing, not shopping is the fact that you can walk away from a situation like this with a bunch of free stuff so do not buy from pet stores because pet stores never do this they don't give you starter kits or new items for you um, you got to buy that stuff all yourself and for these cases sometimes you get hooked up really well sometimes not with really great stuff but nonetheless you do get a few good things so let's go ahead and open up this bag right here I can always use more bags so this is really good I'll definitely be using this so first starting off we have the pellets right here with a cup on the inside now she did actually give me if I can go get it it's actually in the hallway let me see what brand these are she gave me this huge bin filled with food and bedding so I want to go actually see what kind of brand the food is all right here we have it right here this is the small world guinea pig food, a complete feed for guinea pigs. Right here, never seen this brand before. Let's go ahead and look at the ingredients. Wheat mildings, dehydrated alfalfa meal, soybean meal, corn distills, dried grains with solubles. I butcher that oatmeal, corn. Just from seeing the first three ingredients, the first one being wheat mildings, second one being dehydrated alfalfa meal, and the third one being soybean meal. This is a bad food. This is a really bad food. Um, alfalfa should not be given to guinea pigs older than six months, and this actually expired. <laughs> this expired in March, March 4th. So 
That's gonna go into the trash. Even if it wasn't expired, it still would. She gave me two bags of these. I can't even actually give this food to them because it's expired. So we're probably just going to cold turkey and just slowly feed them my brand of pellets, my little concoction. Not surprised. Usually, typically, when you do these rescue situations, pellets are not the best. Let's continue with this Mary Poppins bag and see what we got. Um, we just got two binder clips attached to um, empty packaging. <laughs> Love that. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. She gave us three bottles of the vitamin C drops. You don't need these. These are really bad. This can make your guinea pig not drink water and get dehydrated very fast. If you are providing them with the veggies or any supplements for vitamin C, you do not need to give them liquid vitamin C in this form. You can give them the child's life one, which is what I'm actually going to do tomorrow. But stuff like this where it's like additives into water, do not use this. Very, very bad. So this is going to be thrown into the trash as well all right and then we have got two of our salt licks uh these are not good for guinea pigs as well um or even for rabbits as it's saying ideal for rabbits guinea pigs and other small animals that's a goddamn lie this is by the brand lick it uh, my guinea pigs will definitely not be licking this uh, nor will any other because these are going to the trash these are basically salt licks and if you guys don't know salt contains calcium guinea pigs don't need calcium because it can cause bladder stones so trash again and also i just want to mention as well like everything that was given to me is dusty the house was very dusty i don't know how anyone could have breathed in there um and also i forgot to mention um she was an avid smoker inside of the house so the guinea pigs and the dogs were breathing in that secondhand smoke constantly so that is another thing um she also gave me this mysterious bale of hay <laughs> of i guess timothy hay or alfalfa I can't even tell, but I'm still not going to be using this. And then moving on to the things that actually serve some purpose and I'm actually really glad about. She gave me some water bottle cleaners. It's a really cute one. I've never seen them this size. And then also a bigger one as well. It's actually the only product so far that has been good and actually useful. And then lastly, in this bag of goodies, some actual good things. We have some ceramic bowls. So I've actually seen these before on Chewy. So we have this... Um, I believe this is actually by KT, if I'm not wrong. Um, there's no labeling on here. But this massive carrot one, very, very cute. And then also this salad dish, which is in the shape of like a head of lettuce. I'm not sure if I can use these for the pigs, just given that they're pretty big. Um, and I think they may have a hard time like getting inside of them. Uh, so I may honestly just give these to either Autumn and Alyssa and see if they can use them. This one may, I may be able to use it actually just for some veggies. But then again, when it comes to veggie time, I just throw it inside the cage on the floor. So that works out well for me. Um, but these could be really good for rabbits. And then we also have two white dishes that say hangry and hangry. So two dishes, one smaller than the other. This could be really great um, if Mikey ever has um, a situation where I break his bowls, I could always have these on hand. All in all, yeah, everything in this bag was a bus. Um, nothing was good. And there's going to be a lot that's going to be thrown out. But hey, luckily we got some good things out of it. So I can't complain about that. But yeah, guys, this is the reality of, uh, of rescue situations. It's very unfortunate too, because I find that guinea pigs are like the number one small animal that are always in really neglectful situations. I don't know what it is about them, um, but you just find them to be in really poor care, more so than any, any other small animal. But thankfully we have a successful story in this one and we were able to find all of these babies new homes and to bring them into better care. So I'm really, really happy. He's very excited for the pigs, as you can tell. Thankfully they're off the ground, so we actually cannot access them. You need to be nicer to the piggies and not scare them. Yes. They're very timid. You gotta be nice. But yeah, guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment. If you guys have any questions as well for me down below about how to go about rescue situations, just because I've done them for quite a bit and actually quite often, I definitely have my fair round of experience. So if you guys have any questions, I will be happy to answer them down below. So sound off in the comments. So I think I'm actually going to stop the vlog right here for today and we'll just resume in the morning. Um, tomorrow I'm actually going to be giving full health checks for all of the pigs so you guys will be able to get a very good look at them and then also going to be doing the name reveal uh, we have decided on names for all of them but I want to save it until tomorrow because I feel like that'll be even more exciting for you guys yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna clean up this room because it smells kind of gross with all these cages right behind me um, but I hope you guys enjoy that little segment and I will talk to you guys tomorrow
Alrighty, everyone. So the pigs of first, of first <laughs> officially had their first night in my house. They have been settling in very, very nicely. As you can see, this one over here is very comfortable. She is, she's got a lot of personality. She has been out and about eating, drinking, coming up to me for pets and to say hi. She really does have such a sweet personality. So I really do like that. But these ones over here, the mom and her babies, if you guys can see them, it's a little bit dark. They are very, very skittish. So it's definitely going to take time for them to feel more comfortable in their home, their new home for that matter. And then our boy over here, who is just right there. You can see his little eyeball behind the fleece forest. He's he's pretty much almost to the point where she is with comfortability and coming out and stuff like that. Obviously, they're all very skittish in their own levels, but them two are definitely the most comfortable ones, which is very surprising given where they came from. But then again, you know, all pigs come with their own personalities, so it's just nice to see them come out even more in this setting. They've been nonstop munching on their hay, and also I gave their pellets just now, and as you can tell right Right here they basically flattened everything and also ate everything which is a really great sign tons and tons of poops within the cage that all look pretty normal a little bit dehydrated but that's nothing that water can't fix as you can see they finished an entire bottle even though they have these two right here I think I'm actually gonna move one of these bottles towards the back because it seems like they don't really feel comfortable coming towards the front of the cage they like staying back there so if I put another one back there more than likely they will drink that as well and then he also emptied this one about halfway which is really good to see they were very thirsty when they got here the first hour did you want to come say hi so I think now he's so cute you guys I think now is a great time to tell you guys their names so this one right here the single male his name is Billy to let you guys know we have named them after stranger things characters I was on Instagram live with you guys yesterday showing off the pigs and we had actually named all of them on live with each other so that was really cool for you guys to be involved with that but yes our single male he is going to be named Billy he is so freaking cute and Billy's actually actually my like celebrity crush finished the heart for me so it was only appropriate to name him that i was actually between arthur and billy arthur because that was the street that we were on that we rescued all the pigs from and also he has a little like black spot on the top of his head which looks like a crown but i really do like billy and it also sticks with the stranger things theme so we're going to stick with that here we have l this is super fitting for her because she's very on her own <laughs> little planet. Um, she's fearless. She's like a superhero, obviously, compared to them. So, yeah, I just felt like that was appropriate to name her that. And I feel like with her coloring, Elle matches really, really nicely. And then that one back there, <laughs> you can hardly make out, who's currently squished by her mom's butt. That is Indy. Stranger Things is supposed to take place in Indiana, and I was actually suggested by one of you guys to name one of them um, Indiana, but short Indy. So I felt like that was really, really appropriate because it wasn't super obvious, but it was also still related to Stranger Things. So I really do like that. And then the mom who is in the tunnel, that is Max, fits perfectly because of her strawberry blonde ginger hair. We were actually deciding on doing Joyce because Joyce is the mom in Stranger Things. But I thought about it and I was like, wait, her hair looks exactly like Max. So I felt like that was perfect. So that's Max right in the back, who is the mom of her two babies. And here is her second baby right over there, the most scared of them all. This is Robin. Uh, I just felt like Robin really worked well. Um, we were back and forth between a lot of names, but I felt like Robin worked really, really well. So there we have Robin. We've got Max. We've got Indy all the way back there. We've got Elle. And then we've got Billy, who is currently in his fleece forest. So yeah, these are our little Stranger Things pigs. And I can definitely say they came from the upside down. <laughs> Where they came from, that was the upside down version of Hawkins. It really was. But now they are living in the modern day Hawkins. Much better. So they are going to be much happier going forward. Don't mind the mess behind me right now. I still have to clean it up, but I will get around to doing that very, very soon. This has been obviously a really great experience. I'm glad that we had a... Sorry, I just had to focus that. I'm glad that we had another success story when it comes to rescuing some pigs. Um, again, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. I don't know if I'm going to keep some of them, all of them, give them all away to a rescue, which I am in contact with currently. Um, I just want to, for the time being, just kind of nurse them back to health, get them checked out, 
figure out their personalities and just spend some time with them so I can give you guys updated videos and stuff like that. But nonetheless, you know, the pigs are saved and they're in a much better situation and whatever happens with them, I'm going to obviously look after them 110% and make sure if they're going somewhere else, they're going to be taken care of just as good as I will. Next video is going to be makeovers for all of the pigs. So that is including baths, treatments for lice, mice, and internal parasites. I'm going to be clipping their nails, health checks, all kinds of things. So we're going to be giving them the full rundown of just making sure that they're all in good health before they actually go off to the vet, which is going to be another video in itself. So plenty of update videos to come. I really want to bring you guys along this entire journey from start to finish with rescuing these pigs and kind of seeing how they transform throughout this process. So definitely get excited for future videos coming up very soon. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really, really, really just truly from the bottom of my heart, just want to thank you guys, not only just for donating, because that was a huge portion as to why this even could happen, but just supporting me and being with me and also interacting and enjoying my content. To be able to wake up every single day and to do this all while like rescuing animals, it has been such a blessing and such a fun job to do. It really does make me feel good to be able to provide for animals in need and also to bring them into a life and to show them a life that they actually, they, they deserve this. They don't belong in fish tanks and with not proper enrichment and with no space to move around. They deserve to be spoiled and I'm really glad that we were able to do that in today's video. Obviously there is going to be plenty of more rescue situations in the future and it's definitely unfortunate to say that out loud but that is the reality of these animals. Guinea pigs are what I find to be one of the most neglected animals. People will just stick them into pet store cages or worse yet fish tanks and it's really heartbreaking. In times like this that is when people like me, people like us have to step up to the plate and really look after these animals and show them a life that they really deserve. So thank you guys again for being a part of this with me. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up for the newly rescued piggies that we saved. Subscribe for more videos every single week and until then I hope you and your piggies are happy, safe, and healthy. Bye guys! Thank you.